presentation of To the Best of My Knowledge is made possible in part by a grant from the Penn State Alumni Association, connecting alumni to the university and to each other for more than 130 years. On the web at alumni.psu.edu. From the studios of Penn State Public Broadcasting, this is To the Best of My Knowledge. Good evening, I'm Graeme Spanier, inviting you to join our guests and me as we talk about reality TV. Reality TV is everywhere, pushing the boundaries of taste, decency, and fair play with such hits as The Bachelor, The Mole, The Osbournes, Big Brother, and Cops, to the real-life courtroom dramas on Court TV. But is reality TV just a fad, or is it here to stay? Why have we become so intent on watching the intimate dramas of real life? And what impact do these reality TV programs have on the viewing public and on the people who star in them? We'll talk about that and more. We'll also take your calls at one 800 543 8242. For those listening on the web, our email address is response at psu.edu. Now let's meet tonight's guest. Clay Calvert is a professor in communications and law at Penn State, and he is the author of Voyeur Nation. And Matt Gould has been called the nicest, most down-to-earth reality show contestant ever, a 1999 Penn State graduate with a degree in speech communications, Matt thought he'd signed on for Lap of Luxury, another run-of-the-mill reality series. He later learned that his fellow contestants were really actors and that he was Joe Schmo, the unwitting star of Spike TV's The Joe Schmo Show. Glad to have you with us this Thank evening. you very much. Uh, you don't know how much an honor it is to be here, really. <laughs> well, welcome back to, uh, to Penn State. Well, uh, Clay, let me begin uh, by asking you uh, a question. Uh, we, we have a copy of your book here with us, and I want to ask you uh, a little bit about it. Reality programs can be found on virtually every channel now. There's The Bachelor, The Mole. Temptation Island, Boot Camp, Big Brother, The Amazing Race, The Osbournes, Cops. There's even 1900 House, uh, a more highbrow program that airs on PBS. Uh, in short, reality series have become the fastest growing trend in television. Uh, tell us what sparked your interest in this phenomenon. Well, that's quite a list you just read out, and clearly uh, it's very popular. In fact, its popularity is what sparked my interest in it. Why are we watching it? That's something I, I really wanted to get at. Why are we so fascinated with other people's lives, these situations that we like to consider reality, uh, knowing full well in many cases they're actually very contrived? I think one of the reasons initially was this type of genre was new in the United States, and there's something attractive about about that. Another aspect, these people are real. They're not actors. Uh, at least most of them aren't actors. Uh, uh, and we're kind of fascinated. We're one step closer to that level. So there are many reasons, I would say. Now, the reality craze has gone from fad to fact. In 2001, the Academy of Television Arts and Sciences added the category of best reality show. Uh, for the Emmy Awards. So uh, tell me, what do you think is making these shows so popular uh, among all demographic groups, I understand? Yeah, they're very popular among the young, too. I think the idea is really one reason we're really popular. We like to think of these as almost sporting events. They're almost game shows, really. But instead of being game shows where people guess trivia, uh, they apply their wiles to win situations on survivor, physical skills. Uh, then they become sporting events. And we've always liked sports. We root for somebody. Who's going to win this particular man on the show? Uh, who's going to get the girl on this show, who's going to win Survivor. So a lot of the themes of sports really apply in these situations, I think. Mm -hmm. Well, Matt, you've been right in the middle of it. Uh, the ball has been rolling and mutating as producers seem to be taking on more and more risks. Let me read something. Rob Owens of the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette wrote, Spike TV's The Joe Schmo Show, which seemed at the outset to be the cruelest reality show yet, turned into one of the most entertaining and ultimately uplifting series as it introduced viewers to the nicest, most down-to-earth reality show contestant ever. <laughs> so tell us, Matt, 
How did you come to be Joe Schmo? How did I come to be Joe Schmo is a crazy story. I actually was going to the University of Pittsburgh School of Law. Sorry, I had to, <laughs> <laughs> had to mention it. <laughs> and I, I took a leave of absence. I went to a basketball game, and there was a casting director at that game passing out forms saying, do you want to be on a reality show? I thought, great, you know, I'm really not doing too much right now. So I, I filled out the form, and I went through a couple more interviews, and... There I was in the lap of luxury. Uh, tell us a little about the the show. Actually, better yet, we have a clip from the show. Great. So maybe we'll we'll take a look at that. Uh, now, those of us uh, who are on radio are going to be able to hear it, and uh, a lot of uh, people are viewing us on television, and they'll they'll be able to to, to see it. So uh, let's uh, introduce a clip from the show because a lot of people have probably not seen it although they may have heard about it, and uh, this will tell us a little bit about the phenomenon. So uh, let's roll that tape Great. right now. What would you do if everything you thought was real turned out to be fake? If a team of producers and actors created an entire world around you? If it was filmed 24 hours a day and put on national television? Well, that's exactly what happened to this guy. Meet Matt Kennedy Gould. He thought he was joining eight other contestants on a reality show called Lap of Luxury. He thought he was competing in challenges for $100,000. He had no idea that hundreds of people created an alternate reality just for him. Welcome to The Joe Schmo Show. Eight actors were hired to be Matt's housemates. They all moved into a multi-million dollar mansion loaded with cameras. Every scenario was completely mapped out just to see how Matt would react. This place is it's starting to drive me crazy. All the reality show elements are there. The drama, the humor, the outrageous challenges, oh my God. Oh my God. and of course, the usual cast of characters. The bitch. Of course, because I'm like, hello. The gay guy. That's impossible! The schemer. One of my favorite authors is Sung Zoo, The Art of War. The vet. Comfort was something my generation uh, grew up to learning to live without. The buddy. What's up, Big Congratulations, man. You made it. And the smarmy host. Welcome to the lap of luxury. Every situation was scripted by the so producers no. just to see how Matt would react. You wear a bikini and a hot tub when you're chained to a guy. I'm not, no offense. I'm, thank you. I appreciate that. Every cast Jesus. member performing for the one guy. Look at this. Listen, calm down. Who thinks it's all real. <laughs> it's just not worth any amount of money. This is not. <laughs> How will it end? Are you an actor, dude? Are you an actor? Are you an actor? Everything I Hold the phone. Are you an actor? Tell me, just say it. The Joe Schmo Show. Finally, a reality show that isn't real. What is going on? <laughs> <laughs> I guess the question on everybody's mind is, how could you not have figured this out? Did uh, you did you not have a clue? Well, uh, you know, um, people would like to think that you wouldn't have a clue, but every day, you know, I, I the day I went there, I my first day, I had to share a bed with the veteran and the quote unquote quack. So I mean, I immediately knew I was on an odd type of show. Yeah, I just. I didn't know that it was about me. I mean, I always liken it to I, I had all the pieces of the puzzle but really didn't have the picture on the back of the box to be able to put it together. Uh huh. Were you a fan of reality television before this started? I mean, was it something that you followed? Did you enjoy watching these kinds of shows? Very much so. I love reality TV, and I know that you they it's given credit here that uh, – who Wants to Marry a Millionaire is the first reality show, but I grew up loving um, the real world and road rules to me were, um, in essence, the first reality show. So that's kind of what I, I still, I still, I'm 28 years old. I still watch MTV reality shows. I, I don't know why. I'm, I'm hoping to find out why here mm -hmm. today. Now, Clay, had you seen this particular reality TV show? Do you have familiarity with I it? I actually had not watched uh, Spike TV uh -huh. in this particular show, The Joe Schmo Show, before. For uh, reality TV, very familiar with, especially what you were just talking about there, uh, the shows The Real World, Road Rules. Those shows kind of weaned a whole generation on this type of programming. Yeah. Very yeah. popular. 
Now, we're, we're going to get uh, Rick on the line here in a minute, but we already have one eager caller in the queue. And just to get the ball rolling, we're going to turn to Pete, who's calling from State College. Pete, you're on the air. Uh, you have an early question, and we're happy to take it. Uh, yeah, I'm just kind of curious how Matt thinks he looks on the air here or on his TV show. <laughs> how he looks. What? Uh, I presume he means how you come across, or uh... well, <laughs> I think that I I think I come across well. I mean, I I think on the show I acted with character and integrity. If he uh-huh. means how good looking I am, I mean, I think <laughs> I look great. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that's great. Uh, Clay suggests that there's increasingly a fine line between the world inhabited by Truman Burbank and the world we now find ourselves in. In a sense, you were the real life first Truman Burbank. Mm-hmm. Uh, for those who might not have seen the Truman Show, you might give us a little bit of insight into the influence of, of that movie and then how it connects with uh, what, what Matt experienced. Sure. And in the, in the Truman Show, uh, the actor Jim Carrey plays this individual who's basically born uh, on a soundstage and lives his whole life believing that the people around him are real when in fact they're actors uh, until eventually he discovers this reality, this kind of a cruel reality for him, and he breaks out. The name, of course, Truman and Burbank goes together because Burbank, of course, is where uh, many Hollywood productions take place. He's really the only true man uh, in in the whole movie. And this show certainly smacks of that, really. It's very similar to it. We've undoubtedly had some uh, listeners and viewers who've just joined us. So uh, let let me remind folks that this is, to the best of my knowledge, on WPSX-TV and WPSU-FM. I'm Graham Spanier, president of Penn State, your host. Our guests tonight are Clay Calvert, Penn State professor of communications and law and author of Voyeur Nation. Uh, Also with us is Matt Gould, who many of you recognize as the unwitting Joe Schmo, but ultimate good guy on Spike TV's The Joe Schmo Show. And uh, we want to thank uh, Rick Rockwell for being with us for a few minutes. Uh, uh, He was joining us from British Columbia via telephone. Now, if you have questions or comments uh, on Reality TV, please call us at one 800 543 8242, or you can email us at response at psu.edu. Now we're going to open up the phone lines to see what our callers, uh, our listeners and viewers have to say. So let's start with Aaron now, who's calling from State College. Good evening, Aaron. You're on the air. Hi. Can you hear me? Yes, indeed. Hi. Um, I was calling to talk to Matt mm-hmm. and just say, Matt, my family loved you. Oh, and thanks, we are on our way to Pittsburgh tomorrow to go there for Thanksgiving and your spirit of Pittsburgh, man, we just we felt it. That's great. Um, I, I'm so glad you pre- see I'm a I'm a Pittsburgh ambassador. Yeah. And you're recognizing <laughs> that. So yes. that's great. Um I have so many questions and my sisters and I we we were wondering first of all if for my father loved the show, loved you. We were wondering if someday our family could take you out to lunch, and that would be our Christmas gift to my dad. Oh, wow. And, <laughs> and I don't know how that would work out, but that's that's our dream for our dad, to be able to take the two of you out to lunch and for us to ask you a bunch of questions. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I, I have to say that I, I'm very willing to do that. Okay. Um, I. With my newfound career, I'm a very busy person. I understand. So scheduling that might be, a, you know, a more difficult task. Do you want to say a quick word about what your newfound career is? Well, uh, my newfound career is that I now work for Spike TV. I signed a development deal with them, so I get the opportunity to appear in a bunch of shows, and they have some ideas for shows of which I'll be the host of, so... That's that's great. Aaron, I'll tell you what, we're going to ask a member of the staff to take your name and phone number so that uh, Matt can have that handy. You don't that, have to give that to us on the air. That would be awesome. Thanks for your call, Thanks, Aaron. Aaron. Okay, bye, Matt. Bye. Let's turn now to uh, Andy, who's calling from Chicago. Hi, Andy. Uh, hi. How are, how are you listening to us all the way from Chicago tonight on the Internet? Well, yeah, I was listening to the webcast. Great. Well, I had a question for Matt. Um, it's kind of a two-part question, actually. The first part was... Um, I wanted to know how your experiences at Penn State um, helped you get through uh, the show. And the second part of the question was, who did you think was better looking, Molly or Tony Roberts? <laughs> okay, great. Well, I can answer that second question first. Um, 
by far, I, I thought Molly was better looking, just a lot less makeup. Um, Dr. Spanier, I, I, I apologize for saying this, but um, <laughs> Tony Roberts was built way better. <laughs> so I, I haven't seen either of them, okay. I, I must confess, <laughs> okay. but uh, if you introduce me, I'll give you an opinion. Okay, yeah. <laughs> thank you. And to answer the first part of your question, um, this is actually... I was a speech communications major here at Penn State. Um, I I came to Penn State with the ability to speak, you know, in front of people. Um, but w what my education here did was enable me to hone my speaking skills. So I think that that lent itself to the show in that, you know, when I would be in the interview process or, you know, having to do some speaking, that it lent itself in the fact that I you know was able right now i'm not able to get the thoughts out <laughs> but usually i am able to do to speak well and i think that that's you know where my penn state education came into play i think that you know on a different sense you know my penn state pride kind of lives with me everywhere i go although i did claim pittsburgh more than i did penn state on the show it was still there with me in some sense clay we uh we hear this great experience of Matt. He's got a job. He's got a career. People love him. I, I notice with some of these reality shows, which I don't have a chance to see, but sometimes I see that they are then featured in other shows, like the morning after somebody's kicked off or selected out, they become a celebrity on a, a talk show. Uh, what, uh, what do you think of this phenomenon where the show itself becomes the beginning of a, of a new chapter? Sure, it becomes this whole culture of celebrity, really. I mean, yeah. if, if I'm kicked off Survivor, I'm going to be on David Letterman. Man, I'm going to be on the, the morning show. Uh, another show, I'll be on the Today Show. Uh, and it really breeds individuals who, for no other reason than the fact that they were on one of these shows, become famous. And then we kind of become infatuated with them. And then they become the experts for the next round. And so we now have people doing television commercials based on this. If you think back to the O.J. Simpson trial, not uh -huh. to create another, but, but Cato Kalin really got his, his 15 minutes of fame there. He got a radio show that spun off of that, essentially. And then he went around to college campuses doing a tour called The 16th minute, which was his 16th minute of fame. So I think the whole idea that we kind of gather this fame from this, it kind of validates some individuals too. People know them, people recognize them, people call in from different cities, from Chicago, mm -hmm. and say, I loved you in that show. And there's something rewarding about that. So uh, it kind of feeds into our whole culture of celebrity. What does it say about our society that we are looking for people like this, that in just a, a few minutes on TV, they become a national figure, and we want to see more of them in other contexts. Well, I mean, why aren't we more interested in our own lives is kind of the issue here. Why do we care so much about other people? A part of it is because I think they are real. And what it really questions is kind of this idea, does the media, or do the media validate our lives? I mean, validation through appearance on television. I think many of us today in our society crave appearances in the media because we can say, oh, I was on this show. This is who I am. And so we watch these people. We're kind of kind of gleaming off of that, taking it another level, and uh, we kind of get our own kind of dose of fame. Mm -hmm. And we say, what if I were in that position? I wonder what I'd do on that show. You know, I'd our, figure it out or I wouldn't. Our next caller is a little closer than Chicago. It's Ed who's calling from Jennerstown. Good evening, Ed. Uh, good evening. I just wanted to say to Matt that uh, having watched the show, he had uh, a total different uh, rush of feelings from sadness to happiness and and just looking back on it now and what kind of feelings does he have about it and it uh it was very entertaining for my wife and i we we really thought you were a, a genuine person and uh thank you and you represented the uh western pennsylvania area very well and i'm gonna hang up well ed, ed hang on for a second are you still there yes sir uh before we ask uh, matt for uh that reaction i want to ask you uh did you just happen to be watching that one show, or uh, are you a regular viewer of these kinds of, of reality TV shows? I don't like reality TV uh -huh. in general. Uh, my wife kind of likes the uh, Bachelor one. I don't know what it's called. But we, we we got in with Matt, I guess, maybe from being from Pittsburgh and, uh -huh. and, and uh, the fact that it was a big hoax. Yeah, and and that kind of sucked us in. In uh, we didn't miss an episode, so or as that goes. So it was a good concept. It, yeah, it drew you in and the kept. The idea was uh, uh, different. Then yeah. it, it's what I'm saying is like when the older fella left, and uh, he showed you know 
really uh, right. He's uh, showing a tear in that. <laughs> you know, it was like genuine, and I'm, you know, and I'm thinking, uh, you know, later, like, uh, how do you feel about it, man? I mean, looking back at it, it's got to be uh, well uh, showing your true feelings. That well, I mean, the fact that I cried, uh, that's. You know, if I could work up a good cry for you right now, I would. I, 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 I'm not afraid to like to cry, so that part doesn't bother me. I mean, as far as the whole experience, I mean, the one thing I'm most glad about is that people, you know, like yourself and people come up to me on the streets, gosh, even in the middle of Manhattan, and say that at every moment, you know, you acted with character and integrity, and that's the most important thing to me. So... Do I mean, people recognize great. you walking down the street I all mean, the time it, yeah. yeah every everywhere I go I mean I, I I think I do want to address something that you said earlier clay and is that these people we put these producers put people like myself on a reality show um, we must have something magnetic about us to begin with that is going you know it, it, they call us regular people but there must be something that we offer that would make people want to watch us you know what i mean like they're not just people who um are just looking for you know their 15 minutes i mean it's a lot of fun to go on tv you know what i mean and like the way you said it you said it with a little bit of like you know like the people are wrong for wanting their 15 minutes and I, I see nothing wrong with it. As a matter of fact, I'd like to turn mine into 15 years. <laughs> right. There's certainly nothing wrong with seeking it. In fact, most people, I think, are chosen on these shows kind of to generate conflict. In fact, I think that's what we see. We get the, the standard list of characters on Joe Schmo. Right. And I think that's what we're trying to build up. Let's generate some conflict. Let's generate the elements of competition. Mm -hmm. And now it's just rife for spoof, really, because we've right. seen it so many times parlayed uh, and used again and again that it creates kind of the genre. And it's just ripe for uh, kind of a mockumentary kind of situation. Yeah. We want to thank Ed uh, for his call. Thank you, Ed, for, for your call. And let's turn now to Kyle, who's calling from State College. Hi, Kyle. Hi, Dr. Spanier. Um, I have a question basically for the panel there. Mm -hmm. I was wondering with, uh, I was raised on the real world myself, and I recently watched a special on the real world about how it started and everything like that on MTV. And the producers of the real world basically admitted that they planted characters on purpose uh, to create scenarios and whatnot, and that a lot of the storylines were contrived. And I'm wondering, with, uh, with reality TV being what it is, is it really getting out of the reality phase? I mean, it was a very big disappointment for me to find that out. But uh, with, with the way that it is, I, I realize that not all shows are like that, but if if they're finding out that more shows are, in fact, not reality TV, is it the government's duty to step in then, like they did with the big uh, quiz show scandals before and whatnot? Ah, interesting question. So you're expecting honesty, and, and you're not realizing that this is entertainment, and the producers can do what they want. You, you believe that there's a public trust of some sort that right, must be maintained. Right. What do you think, both of you? Well, I just want to say that... I'm very upset finding out that the real world was staged. I mean, I really liked that show, as I mentioned earlier. And you liked it in part because Just of be the underlying assumption that it was all real. Of course, yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. I think that that is, what's draw that is what draws you to it because it's just like a soap opera, except it's real. So I mean, no one wants to watch it. At least I don't want to watch a soap opera, but I'll sit there all day and watch these shows that are quote unquote real but just so you know my show was aside from the actors i mean everything that i did people speculated that i was an actor actually ah. at some time but no you uh -huh. uh, you will realize by watching my earlier acting uh penn state <laughs> that i'm not an actor <laughs> dr calvert are, are, is there an expectation here do you think that that, that that a public trust that reality shows have to be real i don't think so actually i think most people understand that a show like uh, uh the real world over 1800 hours of tape is shot for one season of the real world and so it's carefully edited and there's so much boring stuff that goes on mm -hmm. a show like big brother the same type of thing much of what happens in the house in big brother is pretty dull so we edit it down for a one episode a week or two episodes a week and I think most people understand that in television the production values that go into it the characters or the individuals are selected let's generate that conflict let's get some scenes uh, the average family household just wouldn't be that interesting yeah well uh, Kyle thank you and let's turn now to Elliot who is uh, also calling from State College you're on the air Elliot hi hi um, I'm glad you're doing this program and I'm a person who's enjoyed some of the reality shows, but I guess there's also part of me that 
um, feels kind of critical of them. Mm-hmm. Um, I think Matt is, because he was a nice guy, I think it turned out to be a benign and positive show in a number of ways, but I think that pretty clearly the intent of the producers was not that. It was to try to be exploitative. And, and I guess also on shows like The Bachelor and The Bachelorette, they draw people into what inevitably is going to be very, very painful situations. Mm-hmm. And I don't say it quite as throwing Christians to lions, but I kind of wonder if it isn't a small step in that direction. Now, you, you said, Elliot, that you enjoy them well, and you're critical of them. Some because what? of what they do show you about people and, and the, you know, some sides of them that do come out. Mm-hmm. Um, How many different ones have you watched, uh, just uh, approximately? I guess the Big Brother one is the one I got hooked on, and uh-huh. I've watched The Bachelor and Bachelorette just, you know, as, you know, once or twice, you know, two or three times, or you know, and uh, watched two or three shows, I guess, of Matt's The Lap of Luxury. Yeah. Now, uh, uh, Clay, uh, there's some lawsuits out there, right? Uh, people... I what are the lawsuits about? Uh, deception, people angry, they didn't get what they were supposed to get. Yeah, the the whole thing now is spawning a whole area of litigation, really. Mm-hmm. Lawsuits based on fraud and deception initially. Also, physical harm on some of the other reality shows we haven't talked about, like Fear Factor, where they'll put somebody in a contraption and the individual's hurt. Uh, Candid Camera, they ran an individual through the magnetometer at the airport. They were able to convince this poor sap that you have to lie down and go through that metal detector. <laughs> and the individual goes through the Gosh. metal detector and he freaks out in the middle of it and his pants get caught on it. Uh, he even said before he goes in there, he says, is this Candid Camera? And they say, no, it's not Candid Camera. A uh, lawsuit came out of that and a jury ruled in favor of that individual. So uh, as these lawsuits are filed, what it does is it raises the cost of this programming up. Generally, this is very low-cost programming. It's not mm-hmm. like the uh, Friends, where each cast member of Friends is paid multiple hundreds of thousand dollars per episode. Mm-hmm. So it's pretty cheap programming. But as the lawsuits go up and the insurance goes up, that starts to add into the cost of doing business. Yeah. Here. Matt, if you don't mind us uh, telling us this, when you went on to the show, uh, what did they offer you? I, I assume that they were paying your expenses, of course, while you were there. They had to sustain you. But uh, was there a payment of, of some kind in addition to compensate you for your time? Actually, yes. Uh, I was promised $10,000 uh-huh. with the chance to win 100000 So Okay. So it wasn't a fortune. Uh, no. But no, it was, by no it means was gen- a fortune. The but... motivation for you at that time really wasn't so much the money, I presume, as the opportunity to be on television, to be a part of an interesting phenomenon. Very much so. Very insightful. Yes, yeah. that's exactly true. I, I couldn't have cared one iota. I didn't care about the money. I never thought I even had a chance of winning it. So that wasn't the If all they catalyst. were doing was paying your room and board during that time, you would have still been Would have been to totally fine with that. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. I just wanted, you know, I am, I'm a ham. I wanted to be on TV. So uh-huh. <laughs> that's really was my motivation. I thought, there's a chance. You know, this is my chance. You know, this business has found me. <laughs> Let's turn now to uh, Andre, who's uh, calling from State College. Hi, Andre. Um, how you doing, Dr. Spanier? Fine. I have one question for Matt and then one question for the panel. Mm-hmm. My question for Matt is, um, do you feel more self-conscious now that you've been like a big TV star and someone who everyone can recognize from your time on television? Do you feel more self-conscious to act the role that you were on the show, which was actually just being yourself, but you were cast as like the good guy, someone everyone can relate to. Do you feel more self-conscious to act that way in public now, not so much in private? And also for the panel, do you think that people who are on these reality TV shows sort of, once they get their role of what they're going to do on that show, do you think they have to, like, they feel pressure to live that role in the public eye? Um, Is that something that sort of could be a backlash from these shows? Mm -hmm. Well, Andre, uh, for myself, uh, you know, I'm in the public eye now, so I I have to act a certain way. I mean, if your job is to be on TV, I'm certainly, I mean, I'm always conscious of my actions, but certainly now that I am in more so in the public spotlight, I, I try to, you know, um, you know, always act properly. Um, as far as being self-conscious about, you know, I am who I am, so I, I pretty much, I mean, I just, that's all I can say is I am who I am. I, I can't change too much, so I'm not really worried about worried about it, but I do have to say that I am conscious of the public eye kind of being on me. Mm-hmm. Let's uh, turn now to Vance, who is uh, on the air from Williamsport. Hi, Vance. Hi. Uh, uh, I just wanted to ask Matt, uh, how aware of was uh, of he was of the cameras 
and he obviously showed like a, a good character throughout the show. And uh, I just wondered how if he ever just kind of uh, distanced himself from the cameras at all, and uh, and uh, how he expressed himself with those cameras in, in front of him all the time. And uh, you know, and he showed that really good character throughout the show. And if that really just kind of changed his character at all. Well, um, did I distance myself from the cameras? There's not a chance of that. They're <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> um, and you can see them. You know uh, where they they're, are. They're there. Yeah. Um, you know, anyone, You, it'd be ridiculous to say you forgot about the cameras. You know, mm -hmm. I'm on national TV trying to represent myself, you know, my family, at my city, at the city of Pittsburgh that I come from. No, I'd ever forgot about the cameras. That's that's not an option. It's you 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 know they're there because like i said i always wanted to put my best foot forward in on all fronts whether that being being funny or you know being you know a person with character i always so yes i was always conscious of the cameras <laughs> mm -hmm. alexis from bullsburg you're on to the best of my knowledge hello hi alexis i have a question for matt um when they told you that hutch was an actor and then went on to tell you everybody else was were you not mad? Um, no. I, you know, a lot of people, people. that's the biggest question I get, you know, or how could you not know or why were you not mad? And I always say, what a great show to be a part of. Because um, it seemed to, I mean, it, it took your life from being on a reality show, which someone will now know you walking down the street for sure but if you were on for instance the real world someone may not you know what i mean well yeah i mean certainly i was i thought i had eight other people to bear the brunt of publicity and things of that nature but it was, when i found yeah. out it was all alone i realized i was by myself but thankfully thankfully as i've said before on this program here i'm a ham so <laughs> you know I, I wish there was no one else around so I could just take all of the... No. <laughs> uh, Alexis. Yes. How old are you? I'm 19. 19. Do you watch much oh, of this? Oh, I had a birthday. I'm 20. <laughs> You're 20 now. Well, happy birthday. Do, do, you, do you watch much reality TV? I don't. This uh, Actually, the Joe Schmo show was the first reality show I watched, and I have to tell you, Matt, I was addicted to you oh. watching every every time. Thank you very much. <laughs> hey, uh, leave your number. We'll see. <laughs> no. So, Alexis, uh, what, 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 what was it about him? I mean, what? Just the situations he was in and the way you reacted without getting mad. Like, some of the situations you were in, I probably would have flew off the handle. And well, you handled everything very well. Thank you. I, I I just think that, you know, I think that people often go on reality shows and complain when they leave that editing made them look bad. And I, I knew that, or I told myself that editing was not going to make me look bad. I'm going to do my best always to do the right thing. I mean, as much as I do that in regular life, you bet, Alexis, I was going to do that on TV. Well, you did a very good job. Thank you very <laughs> much. knowing it. I have one more question. All right. Whatever happened with Molly? <laughs> a common question, a common <laughs> question. Nothing as of yet. Well, good luck. Thank you very much. <laughs> what does that mean, as of yet? There's a young lady on the Molly. Oh, well, as of yet. <laughs> I just mean that we, I mean, I don't plan anything to happen uh -huh. with her in the future. Um, but, you know, that's people's common question because I've, I've had, I was a little bit attracted to her on the show. Mm -hmm. But so, she wasn't real, and I had no chance. Well, are you still in touch? <laughs> we are. I'm in touch with all the actors. Really? Yes. Seth is with us on the air. Good evening, Seth. Uh, good evening, Dr. Spain. How are you? Great. Thank you. Uh, I just wanted I don't really have a question that I want to add to the panel. I just wanted to um, bring up a program that I saw on Comedy Central recently called Windy City Heat mm -hmm. um, that kind of dealt with the same idea that I guess the Joe Schmo show did. It was... Um, produced by um, Jimmy Kimmel, and he the whole idea was that they took a, an average guy and told him he was cast for this role in a movie that was never actually being produced, and they put him in all these abs like absurd situations, and then just kind of let the cameras roll to see how he reacted. Hmm. I guess I just wanted to maybe present that to the panel to see if well, any thanks. of you had seen it. Well, I think he was a uh, uh, like a a very third-rate actor and obviously the spirit of that is very mean but I you know I'm sorry even I had it done to me I think stuff like that is hilarious I mean I you know you're going on national TV you have you're putting yourself out there that's 
you know, something, whatever I got, you know, that's, I went on lap of luxury, you know, thinking if I read the fine print, I would have known they really didn't tell me much. They didn't, you know, you get what you get. I think the other show on Comedy Central that kind of panders to that now is Crank Yankers, which uh, the caller's probably seen as well, uh, in which, uh, and it's also a Kimmel, Kimmel and Corolla uh, produced show, uh, in which they call individuals for crank phone calls. It's an old gag, uh, but they bring it and take it to another level, really, on that issue. And the people are obviously very surprised uh, uh, when uh, the person calls, and they take it to great extremes. So I think there's a whole fascination with that kind of surprise mm-hmm. element. Next, we have uh, Doug from Lewistown. Hi. Hi, Doug. I just wanted to ask Matt, what was the toughest part of the show, and did he ever feel like walking out? Okay. Um, I think the toughest part of the show, or I know the toughest part of the show, was voting on my you know, fellow housemates. You know, I got to really like them, and as I think you could understand, that would be the, the most difficult part. Um, and did I want to walk out? Uh, every day (laughs) it was just a very odd place to be i was locked inside and things really you know didn't jive all the time so i mean i often thought you know what what have i gotten myself into here how are you handling your new success i'm handling it very well i you know i get to um make tv shows that i'm actually aware of now it's, it's <laughs> quite fun <laughs> and certainly everybody relates to you i mean very popular too i mean it seems like it's really gone well yeah i'm a very um i'm one of those stars or you know i on the a-list celebrities i consider myself a, a double lettered star you know like i'm a double f celebrity but people i'm a very approachable i'm not brad right, pitt you know right. i'm the kind of celebrity where people are like will you please call my cousin's sister's boyfriend's aunt she loves you you know, in the middle of the street. <laughs> so. Let's take a call now from Bonnie, who's calling from Plum Borough. Bonnie, tell us where Plum Borough is. <laughs> well, Plum Borough is approximately 20 miles east of Pittsburgh. Okay, I, I haven't been there, but thank you for oh, giving me the, the vicinity. <laughs> I have one question for your distinguished panel. First of all, um, we just ran across your viewing your show this evening by accident. We're mm-hmm. watching you on PBS. Um, And this is very interesting to us because we're not actually big on reality shows, Mm -hmm. but I have seen a few of them, and I'd just like to ask your entire panel, what is their um, opinion of the show called Scare Tactics? Because to me it seems uh, a little too extreme and could cause some serious harm to people. Um, you know, I, I'm aware of scare tactics. Um, I, if you could give us a little bit more information as to exactly what it is, um, I, they, do they bring people to scary areas and? Well, the ones I have seen have been a situation where perhaps their friends will set someone up. They'll take them to a remote cabin for the weekend and then they have actors outside with machetes knives, guns, falling in the building with blood all over them and literally scare them half out of their wits. Yeah, very, I think, potentially dangerous. I mean, but it's, uh, I think you touched on before, Clay, insurance costs can still be far less than the cost of paying some high-priced actors. <laughs> Absolutely, and, but this certainly raises the situations being described. It, unless these people have signed releases, it, it raises the issue of intentional infliction of emotional distress, uh, which is kind of, it sounds like they're creating the situation. Uh, what we don't know probably from watching that is how much really in on it are these individuals? Have they signed releases in this particular situation? Uh, in other words, have they assumed the risk of harm? If they haven't, then certainly we might see some attorneys out there trying to push the envelope of the law and filing some lawsuits to try to get some money on their behalf. If it's a real quick one, maybe we can squeeze in a real quick call from Jeff from Altoona. Hi, Jeff. Hi. Um, Matt, I just wanted to tell you, I, I really liked your show. I, I usually don't watch them too much, uh, but a friend of mine got me to, to watch it, and I really enjoyed it. And I was wondering if there was any way that uh, possibly if I could get your autograph. Oh, without a doubt. Um if you could, you know, leave your name and number, I could send you my autograph without a doubt. And I appreciate you watching, and uh, keep watching Spike TV. And can I just mention something real quickly? Sure. I work for Spike TV. The president of Spike TV is a gentleman named Albie Hecht. Mm-hmm. 
Albie Heck's brother is guess who? The president or the head of the speech communications department here at Penn State, Michael Hecht. No kidding. They are brothers. So my boss and the former head of the department here at speech communications. There are Penn Staters everywhere. everywhere. Yes. About 450,000 living Penn State alumni. And this show is sponsored by the Penn State Alumni Association. Great. So it is a small world. Indeed. And I want to thank you both very much for being on this program tonight. What a fascinating topic it's been, and very glad to have you in the studio. And uh, uh, we'll have to do something like this again, I think. Absolutely. Lots thank of, you. Lots of callers, and apologies to those who, of you who uh, emailed us and didn't quite uh, get in on everything. A uh, quick reminder, tonight's program will be stored in an electronic archive that can be accessed through wpsu.psu. Dot edu. This site also links to online resources on tonight's topic. I want to thank our guest, Clay Calvert. Dr. Calvert is Penn State Professor of Communications and Law. And we want to thank Matt Gould, star of Spike TV's The Joe Schmo Show. We hope you'll join us on Tuesday, December 16th, when our topic will be Pennsylvania's Homeland Security. For all of us here at Penn State Public Broadcasting, I'm Graham Spanier, the president of Penn State, thanking you for joining us. Presentation of To the Best of My Knowledge is made possible in part by a grant from the Penn State Alumni Association, connecting the Penn State family to the university and to each other for more than 130 years. On the web at alumni.psu.edu. A copy of the program you've just seen can be purchased through Penn State Media Sales at mediasales.psu.edu or by calling 800-770-2111.